Welcome to Call That Girl's Remote Support Show. I'm Lisa Hendrickson, your hostess, and this is show number 11. Just a reminder, all recorded shows can be found on podnuts.com and moving ahead on my YouTube channel here at Ustream or at remoterockstars.com. There is a show schedule listed on the navigation bar as well. All right, this is a kind of a boring week at Call That Girl. So I want to say it's an all killer, no filler show, but I'm not sure I'll be able to fulfill that. It uh, Overall, I think the industry is seeing some slowness right now. There's a threat at Technible that everybody's talking about, about it being slow for break fix people. And I have to agree, I've only had like five or six calls this week for break fix that were billable. And, uh, you know, a lot of those calls turned over to our daily monitoring plan, which was nice because that adds in more money and gives our clients better protection. But, uh, yeah, it's been kind of slow. So luckily I have my other consulting work I do to back me up a little bit. But, um, you know, that's why it's kind of nice if you do multiple services for your company, you can back each other up. And, of course, because mine is Office 365 now and Outlook, I have plenty of work that's coming around. And um, so this week... I looked at the workload and I was like, you know, I really don't have a lot to share. Not really like with any good break fix work, but I'm just going to talk about the jobs I did today and the calls I took today because today was just a, what I would call a Microsoft Office panic. <laughs> In general, it's becoming a panic with people and the messes they're getting themselves into and uh, it's it's getting hot and I don't know how to fix the world. So it's one job at a time, I guess here. Um, and then our topic today is going to be talking about some hardware repairs that you can do remotely. Everybody thinks that you can't do hardware repair remotely and you can. And it might not be, you know, hardware repair like tearing out a, you know, um, or, you know, replacing a fan or replacing a hard drive, but there's other troubleshooting things that you can do as a remote support person, make some money and give your clients some good guidance. So that's one thing you want to think about is what else can you offer instead of saying, you know, I don't have a shop. Let's maybe help the client. So that'll be our topic today. We're going to talk about monitors, printers, uh, hard drives, and hmm, what else was there? I'll, I'll remember later. Okay. So today's calls and jobs were kind of crazy. And the first one started off with this client that had a OneDrive. He wanted OneDrive set up. Now, as you know, OneDrive is part of the Office 365 plan. Well, oddly, he bought it from the free version that they offered once for like two gigs free. And then somehow he paid for the 15 gigs. And then he paid, or no, then he bought a Surface and that gave him 200 gigs free. And he had been using it. So he had 217 gigs in his OneDrive and he was using it in the cloud so like he would log in and do everything on the cloud, but it wasn't matching his PC and it wasn't matching his Surface computer. So I said, well, you probably have it configured wrong, so I can help you with that. And then he said, well, I want the full one terabyte option. So I said, okay, well, I'll go to my vendor and get the one terabyte. Well, this is where there's confusing Microsoft stories. My vendor doesn't offer the one terabyte. They offer 25 gigs for three dollars a month or something like that well this guy's dealing with 500 gigs of data that he wants on OneDrive <laughs> which <laughs> I've never even heard of that much up in the cloud to be honest with you and I don't even know how long that's gonna take to synchronize but <laughs> it's gonna take a while but anyway so long story short was the vendor end up couldn't help him they, they they couldn't help him set it up because he had the free version and they didn't know that you can't use the OneDrive for business, but you can, and nobody knew what was going on, not even the vendor. And it was really confusing for me. So I finally said to the client, I'm going to remote in, and I'm just going to fix this. Well, once I got into his account, and I was like logged into the settings, it said you can buy more space. So I'm like, where's where are they going with this one terabyte thing? I don't get it. You know? Well, I finally found the button. He purchased 200, no, I think 200 extra gigs for $4 a month. And that makes sense. So now he's like happy as a clam. And he's like got, you know, his 400 some gigs up there. And um, that's when he called me back today and said, well, actually, it's not synchronizing. And I'm like going, well, that's a lot of data to synchronize. 
And so he was like, well, let's schedule an appointment for later and maybe you can come in and help. And it turns out that he had um, didn't download the right app. So this is where all of this office stuff can get very confusing because they have home version stuff, they have the business version, and this is not the first time I've seen clients by both or, you know, by the, the personal and the office and they're trying to get people to synchronize and I'm like, yeah, you know, it's almost like a small nightmare. And I wish people would consult before they go buy everything instead of just jump in. Um, I'll have another story later of why people are kind of getting screwed and Microsoft is probably loving it because they're not going to tell them what they just bought is the wrong product, you know. So the second panic I had today, and this is why I'm calling this the hot mess, and I had two calls, almost identical but different issues. Um, the first person was um, a client that says, I'm on a Mac, I'm, I have Parallels set up so I can do Outlook on there, and nothing's syncing, and I have an iPhone, and I want to buy an iPad pad. I said, well, of course, you should just move to exchange. And I told her the pricing and she's like, well, I don't know if I really want that. It seems kind of robust. And I'm like, you have four different devices. You probably need exchange. And that would be perfect for her. Well, then she says, well, everything's working fine, except for this iCloud thing I have. <laughs> I'm like going, so you actually have four, five different devices and software trying to all work together. And so I was very clear and said, okay, I will try to help you. And this is where everybody can learn on a remote support ticket, no matter what you do, is to not underquote a client, always overquote a client, almost. I said, well, I'll be honest, this could be a 15 minute fix for me, or it could be a two hour fix. And if it goes over that, um, we'll talk about it <laughs> because I don't know what to do after two hours. Sometimes it's just worth moving them to exchange, which is what I did with a client last week I gave him two hours free because his was such a mess I said let's just move it to exchange so she said okay I'll pay you the two hour rate and my rates are 129 an hour and like I said I don't know if it's gonna come in at 15 minutes or two hours because I have to try to figure out what's wrong with her issues but that's you know if you don't know and you don't see it I always say I'll give them a free consult but I usually fix it that's the point so if you're doing a remote support consult for somebody, you're, if you don't have a flat fee, like for a virus removal or tune-up, you're better to overquote. And I probably should have even said four hours, <laughs> just in case. But anyway, um, so the clients, they get themselves into hot messes with all these products. And there's a lot of products that are playing on top of each other. Like one example is Outlook Exchange ActiveSync. It's just like a free exchange server. Okay, so the other client that called in today said, well, look, I have my email for my business, and then I have, um, it synchronizes with my iPhone, no, my Windows phone, sorry, and it, it synchronizes with something else, but something else didn't work, and I forget what it is, but I looked at his, uh, I actually remoted in, and I said, well, you have an IMAP email, and you're using Exchange Active Sync." He goes, well, I just don't know what calendar is the real one. And I said, well, you only have one calendar because IMAP doesn't have an attached PST file. And so I said, well, look, you could switch to Exchange. And he goes, well, I already have Office 365. And I'm like, oh, okay. So anyway, after him telling me all this, I'm like, well, what uh, package did you buy? He goes, I bought the best one, $15 a month. So here we go again. A client is paying for the most robust Office 365 premium package. He's using one product, Office 2013. That's it. And I'm like, he doesn't even know that he could be having exchange for free, SharePoint, OneDrive, Link. You know, not, not a lot of people use the Link feature. But I was like, you know, okay, so here's what you're paying for and here's what you're not getting. And I said, I can move your you know email contacts calendar to exchange and then he said well how much is that and I said well it's gonna be three or four hundred now I used to have a one person quote of three hundred due to my new over quoting and especially when I found out that he's using Gmail for his server <laughs> I was like okay we're gonna add another hundred because you saw the last show I talked about Gmail and IMAP being just a problem 
He goes, well, okay, so here's my choices. And, and th I think that the point of this story here is that it was a 45-minute consult, which I think is really too long for a job like this. Remember last week I was saying you should have times for certain jobs, you know? I mean, I've sold a $1,000 job in 15 minutes before, so I don't, I got to figure that out, how to contain these long consults. Whoa. Sorry, guys. I just got a, something popped in my ears. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> I think an ad just popped up. So I need to learn how to contain these. It was supposed to be a troubleshooting call, and it turned into a consult. So I couldn't really bill them because I didn't really do anything. And, you know, that's one of my goals. Let's put it this way. I'm still, you know, very far from learning everything. Because I need to figure that out because um, I'd already helped them with a the problem a few days ago, and this was kind of like a follow-up call. And I'm like, 45 minutes is a lot of time to be doing a consult for a job of that area. Now, if anybody disagrees with me, please chat or shoot me an email and maybe we could talk about it because I only learn sometimes from hearing others. Uh, Lisa at callthatgirl.biz, shoot me an email. Okay, folks, that's kind of my um, craziness today. And then to close it, I had a um, I need an Excel expert. So <laughs> I said, I'm definitely not going to help you with Excel. I don't know how to formulate cells and do all the math, and uh, and I gave him a referral. But, you know, once you start getting involved with these kind of, you know, uh, other side, side of the Microsoft calls, you start getting stuff like that. Okay, let me check my notes here, make sure I got today's dramas dealt with. Those was kind of the three. And... I kicked off the morning with selling a four-hour consulting ticket on a very weird corporate exchange mailbox issue that the company wants to outsource. So I was like, awesome. I'm excited. I took that job. I've gathered enough info, and it's really, it's in my knowledge range, but it's, um, it's the, the company is like, we're new to it too, so we're willing to work with you. I'm like, perfect. I love four-hour jobs right away in the morning. They're nice. And that is call actually came from one of my Google ads I paid for and the guy actually said it was an ad on the side and I was like awesome so I made $350 from that Google ad that's a good return on your investment mm -hmm. well that was my day today folks so now we're gonna move on and I'm gonna give a little pitch here for a couple things um, a lot of you are watching the show and you've been maybe downloading from Podnuts or seeing it on you know other venues I've been putting it out there. Um, the remote support book is, I want to just kind of make it clear that it's just not a book you read. I'm kind of trying to turn it into a book that um, you continually learn from because as I said uh, the remote support book, I'm not writing any more books because they're really too long to write. It takes too long to write and the updates I need to do are faster than I can write the books. So that's why I'm moving the updates to the remote rockstars.com website which makes a lot of sense because now I can shoot out updates and I have a lot of them just since November which was the last release of the book so the remote support ebook um, if you buy it I've changed all the the products in it so you get everything it's a full set of all my books and inside the the zip file you get you get the new remote support book and then the documents folder you get the remote support version 2, you get the manual of operations, and you get my social media guide, which I wrote four years ago, and it's still very relevant, or relevant, um, uh, current, I'll say, rather. <laughs> it's still very good. A lot of it might not be, you know, needed so much anymore because it's changed a lot, but the four books alone, and you get the migrations ebook, how to do migrations to Microsoft Exchange from Pop IMAP. And those four alone are good and then you get my templates as well and um, you can purchase that at callthatgirl.biz slash publications and then you get access to the remote rockstars website and it's kind of like a community of of um, remote support technicians so we want to keep our community tight so we can learn from each other and the ebook itself has a lot more than what I talk about in the shows um, like customer service tips, how to deal with computers that crash when you're remoted in, many checklists, and coming up soon here is my Office 365 webinar, or not webinar, the video modules. 
hopefully well that'll be done in August and anybody that purchases the book gets the big discount on those okay next up is just a reminder that the CompTIA Channel Con live show will be Monday August 4th I believe at 1 o'clock so try to check out other venues or you know show notes and stuff to check out that, that live show and also um, for the Android app addicts you can go to podnuts.com and check out that show um, they're broadcasting five days a week each show is perfect length for you to get your daily commute or workout podcast on and the show now brings on developers company CEOs and reps to talk about apps with the guys and that's their little pitch and then I got thinking about my very first remote support show I did and how I pitched it to door and I said I think we could do a show and he was like okay tell me some topics so I got thinking about it because I know I'm talking a lot about office and not every um, person out there is like interested in office 365 so I started thinking about well what other show topics you know could we discuss here and I remember I sent a list to door before the show even began and uh, and I had a list of 38 things which I think I talked about in show two or three maybe and it's quite hardy and so I'm gonna start picking these topics out um, to try to like for my daily stories and the weekly catch-ups and how I fix things um, try to tune that in and time together somehow because there's there's a lot of things that I've kind of lost track with I think and it's time to bring it all together uh, I want to do a live tune-up next week hopefully but I'm having a problem with sharing my screen so you can see what I'm doing so I'm trying to figure that out and if anybody knows of an awesome tool I can use that'd be great <laughs> I can't figure it out <laughs> okay now on to some bigger news and I need your help uh, I am moving to Key West Florida on Labor Day and I'm looking for contacts down there anybody who knows of rentals or good hotel hotel deals or just tech contacts or anybody that lives down there that'd be nice too um, I'm moving there for fall winter spring and packing it up and leaving and I'm very excited and today I actually bought this little nugget it's a um, AT&T little hotspot thing so I can travel I'm planning on working the whole time I'm driving down to uh, Florida my brother's gonna drive and I'm gonna work at least, at least try to book calls and take calls till I'm landed down there but so now I get to play with this and it has a little GPS on it too it's kind of fun it's my new little tech toy and then I was gonna show you guys I made this little kit here of stuff this is my new office everything I need is in this little bucket and I think it's kind of funny when we start to pack up and pack up our lives and stuff we realize you know how much we don't need and how much we need and I'm like okay I definitely need this just in case <laughs> that's my emergency and I need a network cord just in case <laughs> and I've got uh, just little things like my my uh, software recovery key you know emergencies I've got a couple hard drives I'm bringing with uh, I already have them preloaded with Windows so if my desktop breaks I can just swap out a hard drive I'm like trying to plan everything tight you know it's it's a full life pack up and move and I'm just getting a little uh, a little nervous because I don't want to have to be down for work this is my life you know <laughs> it's very important um, it's not a &T. well that's that's good Martin I am excited to try off this uh, try out this hotspot thing all right you guys I think we're ready for the topics this week which is hardware printers and hardware and um, I'll start with somebody emailed me about BIOS and you know I, I never talk about things in depth if I don't know much about them and in the computer repair industry I'm not a BIOS person I never got into it I think I flashed one once when I had to because I was stuck and I figured it out and googled it 
and so honestly I don't know how you can do that remotely so I'll, I'll let somebody else maybe email in an answer and I'll share it with the next show um, but I can tell you quite a bit about printers monitors and modems <laughs> those I know quite well <laughs> so the key let me get a little sip of water first the key to let's start with monitors when people call in and they're like my monitor isn't turning on the, a lot of us give free advice like well just turn on turn off unplug it turn you know things like that um, there's different types of monitor calls that can come in one is my monitor one of my monitors works and the other monitor does not work so here's how I used to help is I used to give free support for 45 minutes to find out that the monitor was fried after troubleshooting it or whatever it took and I wouldn't bill the clients and at this point everything I do has to be billable except for maybe a quick five minute freebie that's it so the, the monitor troubleshooting is quite simple nowadays I mean they're so cheap anyway but you know basically what I tell people is okay I'm gonna book the appointment our minimum call is forty dollars whether we fix it or not and my normal 15 minute rate is 49 but I think a forty dollar fee is fair to be you're actually a consultant to let them know what's going on they don't have to take it into a shop and drag it all in and you know you're diagnosing the problem for them for forty dollars pretty much so if the client agrees we schedule the appointment and what I will do is um, of course have them shut off all their computers the monitors unplug everything let everything cool down for 10 to 15 minutes they call me back um, a lot of times if they've got just one monitor I have them plug it back in and secure it and tight it check the lights I'll make sure it's blue or green whatever color it usually is if it's amber there's problems and I think if it's yellow there's no source and you might want to correct me on that but it's been a while since I did a monitor job but at that point you can figure out if the monitor is coming up or not and um, sometimes believe it or not they've got two graphics cards in the back so <laughs> you have to maybe try the other one maybe one died and a lot of times people have different plugs in the back um, I think it's DVI that's that's the other option um, make sure those are tight if they have a, an extender you gotta think what the client is seeing and a lot of times they don't know what they're even talking about so you have to use colors I think white is DVI blue is VGA and, um, and then there's HDMI of course too but when you're doing troubleshooting like that since you're not there you have to talk out the, the issues with the client so they understand and uh, if the monitor lights don't come on then you can also have them test it with another computer see that's where you go to the next step and they're like oh I didn't think about that because a lot of people have a laptop they can plug it in and you know to find out if the monitor is really dead or not um, if a monitor's one to three years old it's just possible that the computer's graphics card just went crazy or something went wrong and it's not working and there's no power but uh, that's really rare I don't remember those kind of calls too much but um, anything can happen but anyway um, you know if if you end up diagnosing that it's fried out they can just go to Walmart and buy another monitor or some other store and they're happy usually to find out what the problem was or what it is so you don't have to worry about them being mad most people want the forty dollar diagnostic done and if they don't have to drag it in somewhere or their fear is they have to fix it which at this point you know I tell people you don't have to fix monitors anymore I mean they're just too cheap to really for someone to tear it apart and fix it unless they're hobbyists and like doing soldering and replacing screens or whatever um, so there's a lot of things you can do with the monitors uh, secondly with printers now any the first thing you should always do is ask people how old their printer is <laughs> I've learned that the hard way <laughs> always ask and then if they go oh, it's like seven years old but it works good well it worked good until it broke because they do break and that's when uh, I've told people I have a $79 printer fix and if I fix it or not because you know many times you get into um, your remote into the computer it's a driver problem it's configured wrong you just need to uninstall the printer reboot reinstall it 
with Windows 7 and 8 it picks up really fast you shouldn't have any problems but you know again who knows and you know the printer could be just dead so a lot of times I'll start with um, just the hardware end of it which is turn off the printer unplug all the cords all the cords in the back everything network and power if there's a network cord most are Wi-Fi which is even worse because those people don't know how to put the codes in and I and it's like you gotta almost Google the model of the printer to find out how to get to the control panel to get to the Wi-Fi to get to the settings so you can put in the, the passcode and that's tough sometimes you know because I charge $79 for a printer flat fee <laughs> so you're kind of like okay this is gonna take more time but um, so just to get back to what I was saying about the printer itself um, unplug it power it off leave it off for a few minutes let it just kind of cool down itself it's like a computer almost in a sense with the power now I have them plug in the power and then I let them or in the network cord or whatever and then I let them cycle it up so it's showing on make sure the Wi-Fi light is blue and blinking that's a norm almost on all of them and then after that's done I have them unplug the network cord from the computer and plug that back in and then I reboot the computer and sometimes I do the opposite I'll unplug the computer excuse me unplug the network cord after I reboot to give it a fresh connection that's a uh, one of the old school you know network tricks is to unplug the cord at corporations so um, so back to printers is uh, the troubleshooting is you want to do the printer and the computer and then the drivers and the uninstall and it can be you know an hour-long call to figure it out especially if the you know the printer is only a year old but I think diagnosing at first finding out um, it's easy to do the resets and the reboots without having to get into the software end of it and it's really rare if a computer that's less than five years old just dies I'll be honest I don't I don't see that much um, so if you kind of give up on it and tell the client, you know, I can't fix this, then they maybe do want to get a secondary opinion if you're not really good at printers, you know, because printers are, what, 70 to $150. I mean, look at my old junker. It still works, you know, 6310. Just need ink. Nothing just rolls. So I wouldn't pay $79 to have somebody help me fix that. But then again, I'm like, well, if it was only a 15 minute call maybe I would you know so you don't have to charge 79 either if it only took you 15 minutes to fix it people are more than happy to not have to go buy a new one set it up da 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 but the um, the printer problems are getting rare I don't see them anymore in fact I can't even tell you the last time I had a printer call that came in at all I don't know if they're not breaking or people are just giving up on them and just saying ah fool, I'll just get a new one it's kind of like reminds me of when Dell came out with the the dimensions in 2003 <laughs> people just finally stopped fixing them about a year ago <laughs> and they gave up which was nice and finally let's see we have printers monitors um, you know computer hardware is kind of easy to diagnose on the, some levels I think I talked about this on a show before is you know people call in and they're like yeah I got the, the my computer won't boot up at all well, you know, if you start from the back end, you know, unplug every cord, even the serger, just unplug everything, take out all the cords, and let it sit for 15 minutes. People tend to get click happy or button happy, and they start wanting it to go faster. <coughs> Excuse me. And the computer won't come on, so it's stuck in a loop with the hard drive, and it won't boot up. And then at that point, you can ask people, well, do you hear it running? and you can figure out if the hard drive is even spinning the powers on but uh, normally I have them unplug everything leave it off for 15 minutes 15 minutes solid that's my good guide and then I am plug in the power and the monitor only no keyboard no mouse and when they plug in just those two it takes away any peripheral devices that might be causing a black or blue screen and if they're like hey it came up well, then I start going, oh, well, maybe you plug something in that the keyboard, new keyboard, some camera, some iPhone, something that glitched it. And you can also do that in your preliminary questions, too. But uh, that's when you can find out if something's causing the computer to not boot up. 
and then you plug things in slowly again. Most mice and keyboard come back up. Uh, if people have wireless keyboards, they got to plug in that little tiny piece. And that's usually a half hour call once you get them talking through it. Um, and then if, if they have uh, no power at all and nothing and it's dead and it's done, you could see if they want to try another power cord, but that's usually never the case. The computer just died. <laughs> and they do die. We know that. Um, then they have to take it to a shop. And that's when you should try to, if you're remote support only, you know, have a referral. You know, someone that gives you a little kickback or kicks back clients to you. Um, a lot of remote support people have a shop or they do on-site themselves. So at that point, you would you have to make the decision, you know, if you want to put in the time or not. And since I'm remote only, I will do a $40 call to help somebody to figure out what's wrong. And sometimes it comes back up and they're fine. And they are fine. Okay, finally on my list is modems and routers. And on the last show I talked about this, it's kind of simple to troubleshoot them. The modems generally uh, unplug the power for a solid minute, put it, plug it back in, the blinky lights come on, uh, the internet button should be blinking, of course. And then the, the big problem is the routers nowadays. I talked about in my last show, the guy who I fixed, the senior citizen, um, who, who was awesome to work with, the router had a firmware update. Once I remoted in and I got in there, I saw that happen, and I'm like going, I bet that was it. He didn't have a problem, you know, it just was maybe coincidental that his modem went offline or whatever, the router needed a firmware update, and it took me about an hour to fix it, but that was a good call for me because I hadn't uh, troubleshooted in a little while, and it was kind of fun. I still know what I'm doing. I still got it. But um, anyway, people... Another question you can ask them prior to troubleshooting is, how old's your modem? Because as you know, people can live off a modem for five, seven years. And if you're trying to troubleshoot a modem for even a half hour, maybe they should just go get a new one. And maybe you should just go, if you do on site, you'd go, of course, you know, try to, try to get that job. But I think, you know, in a, in a nutshell, you want to do a little troubleshooting first because what if it's just a reset? And if I had someone reset a modem, I don't charge them for that usually. <laughs> I'm pretty good at being nice that way. I don't feel it's fair to bill everybody for everything because that's the, the nice stuff we do as technicians. Uh, routers, though, on the other hand, to reconfigure a router, that is a billable job and that is a decision based on if the client wants to go get another router that has to get re reconfigured anyway. You know, it's easy to do now. They have little you know, charts, of course, you know, help people do it easy. Or troubleshoot the one they just bought a year ago that's not working. And that's what that guy did last week. All right. Um, da -da 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 -da. So I covered printers, easy stuff, monitors, computers, and modems and routers. And let's see. I don't think I have anything else this week. It was... Like I said, my my hot things of the week were kind of slow. Not much going on. And uh, it was it's Wednesday. So I got two more days. Hump day today. And a lot of people start calling on Thursday. So that's why I don't get too worried if it isn't too busy before Wednesday. Because I've had some great Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays. Um, all right, folks. I think that might be the end of the show. I'm going to wrap it up. If you want to uh, email me some questions, I do get um, some people that ask questions and I tell them I'll talk about it on the show, like the BIOS question today. And you can email me at lisa at callthatgirl.biz, lisa at podnuts.com. You can find me on Twitter. I have a new Twitter channel. It's at remoterockstars.com. Or you can do at callthatgirl.com. Oops, just at call that girl. And I'm on G Plus if you want to try to find me there. But I think that's it. I'm going to wrap up the show. Uh, thanks for participating, gang. And if you have any questions, make sure you email me. And otherwise, I will see you on Monday at Phoenix. Take care. <laughs>